Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shit Moms Won't Say. Thank you for indulging my very short break last week. Mama was tired. Uh, I always say that I'm excited to have everybody on, all of my guests I'm very, very excited about, but I am truly, truly, like, jazzed that this person is on my show. Uh, she is just shy of 80,000 followers on Instagram. That's eight zero 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 zero. That's like a, that's a pretty... That's a big number, so good, good for you. Um, this hilarious woman has made an entire brand out of her own fertility issues. You probably already follow her, and if you do not, you most certainly should. Um, author, comedian, social media maven, hilariously infertile, mom of two, Karen Jeffries. Hello, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> such a nice introduction, thank you. Thank you, I've been practicing it all day. I wanted to yeah. I was like, what do I say about her? <laughs> a lot of people like her. <laughs> you know, like this, this person's on, so just look. So yeah. She's here, and people like her on Instagram. <laughs> like, I, I didn't think that that was good enough, so I felt like <laughs> practice, right? Like, like that, was very, that was very, that was like, give her so a better much. intro. Um, so before we get into the, the Big Mom 3 and all that good stuff, when we had connected about a week ago, um, you had said to me, like, oh my God, you're a lesbian. I love lesbians. And I was like, that's so funny, so why? <laughs> Um, <laughs> ah, I know, but then you were like, hey, have you read my book? And I was like, it's in the mail. And it was, it's literally, I have it right here. It's super funny. So you were like, I say something about lesbians. I'm not going to tell you what it is. When you read it, like, we'll talk about it. So you, you basically said that through your fertility treatments, you had really, really high hopes of becoming friends with a lot of lesbians at fertility clinics. And it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> I was so bummed out because growing up, I had a lot of friends who were bisexual and lesbians and gay and everything. And, and I, we still do, but like, I just, I feel like we have a lot more, um, male gays, um, friends than, than lesbian friends, but I kind of feel like, I don't know, maybe I am a closeted lesbian a little bit, like on the back burner. Come out. Did you ask yeah. out on my show? <laughs> came out. If you asked my husband, he'd be like, no, for sure. Like, no, she's a lesbian. Yeah, oh, like, he's like, yeah, 100%. But I did, like, I had a lot of friends who, who, you know, different sexual orientation growing up, and now all my friends are like heterosexual. And I was like, when I go to the fertility clinic, because I, I knew nothing about infertility or fertility clinic. So I just assumed that it was for lesbians. Like, that's what I just assumed, you know, <laughs> like I was like, okay, so I'm just going to meet like a ton of like really old people, like people who like met, <laughs> who like met their mate at like 50 and lesbians. And I was like so excited. And like my husband dropped me off and he was like, why are you in such a good mood? And I was like, I'm going to go make friends with lesbians. And like, it didn't, it didn't you happen. brought your softball mitt. You had very yeah. hopes. Yeah. Happen. I was like, hey. But no. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, you can definitely like now put me down as a lesbian reference. I will vouch for you at the meetings. Um, you're in. Thank you're you. in. Congratulations. And I'm sorry that um, my people were not kinder to you in the fertility clinic. <laughs> I'm sure they had other things on their mind. Um, <laughs> I guess everyone did. So let's, let's jump into the big mom three. So first question, the big mom three. Did you always know you wanted to be a mom? Yes, always. Yes. Always. hundred percent. Always. Always. Were you like a, like a doll playing little girl that was like, I want babies. I was a doll playing little girl. I was, um, always cared for like dolls, younger children, animals, always obsessed with that. But I wasn't, I was never a girly girl. Like I was never yeah. like good at that stuff. Like I grew up climbing mountains and horseback riding and doing all this other stuff. So I was able to like clean up and go to prom and like look appropriate, but I was never like the paint my room pink and be a girly girl. So like, it was weird, but I, I was always just very caring for younger children and for and animals and dolls. And I just always knew I wanted to be a mom. By the way, that, that may be why people think you're a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, um, like you just okay. see like my tools downstairs. Like you'd be like, oh yeah, no. Like there's oh, no she's question. Gay. She's yeah. gay. You're full tool belt. Um, no, okay. I have a tool. You have a tool belt? I have a tool belt and I call it my cool belt. Oh, I, 
I don't think you should. I don't, I don't have a tool belt. I have a tool belt. I have a tool bench. I have a pegboard like I do. I have like, I just bought a hammer drill the other day and I was like so excited about it. Like, it's like, I know, I know. See, this is why my husband's like, no, she's 100% leaving me for a woman. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, we'll see. Okay. Well, you know, a lot, a lot's come out in a very short period of yeah, time. Like, and I think we can end our time together. I think we accomplished what we needed to do. And thank you for coming on my show. Yes. Um, Four minutes. Okay. That's it. And cut. <laughs> um, second question, the big mom three, mm -hmm. what is, um, the like shittiest or most backhanded piece of advice you've ever gotten from another mother or parent? Um, it's, it's kind of like a longer story, I feel like, but I'm going to try to make it a bridge because I have a tendency. Go to town. Okay. I have a tendency to like be long-winded, but I was in the supermarket with my infants and, um, she was in the baby carrier, which I wasn't a big baby carrier person. Um, and, uh, cause I was whatever, I couldn't put her in this, I couldn't have the snap and go. I needed to buy a lot of things. It was like a long, all like different things ended up happening to make this situation happen. But it was the middle of winter and she started like she was like sweating because like I was sweating. So like the two of us combined in like her winter coat and my winter coat, like I was sweating. She starts screaming hysterically because she's sweating. Like we're both like just having like a hot flash. So she starts <laughs> my <laughs> child, I know, my like four, like probably two or maybe two month old. Yeah, two month old probably is like screaming hysterically. So now I'm like checking out, just like trying to work through it, you know. And I finally, I just like rip her coat off of her because we we're both like sweating so bad. And uh, it was like December. So I guess maybe she was like less than that. Maybe she was like six weeks old. Um, but like, it wasn't that cold. Like I live in the Northeast and like sometimes December is really cold and sometimes it's like 70 degrees on Christmas. And like that has happened. So, Perfect. so like we were, I was leaving the, the, the supermarket and this, this person was driving by in their car and they stopped to let me go, which I was like, oh, that was so nice. Like, and I had my, my daughter's coat was off of her, but she was in the, the, the baby carrier thing. And I had just the hood like hooked onto her head. So like, it was still covering her head. Yeah, and, like, this around. guy. Yeah. Like we all know that move. Sure. But like she wasn't on her. Cause I was like, okay, we're going outside. Like I need to put this on her, but like, I knew she was still overheating. So the car lets me by, I get to my car, the car goes around the parking lot, comes, circles back to where I am, and is like, you need to put a coat on that baby. And I was like, no, she's overheating, like, it's fine. And, and she was like, no, it's really cold, like, you need to put a coat on that baby. And I was like, no, like, she's, I don't, like, you don't know what you're talking about. She's, and then she's like, she's crying because she's cold. I'm like, she's crying because she's burning up, like, you know, and so, and so then she's, I forget how it went from like, she's crying because she's burning up to me going, what did I, 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 I curse at her. Like I said something. Good. You I should curse at her. Yeah, but I was, I was like, I was like, you fucking God. Like that, like something. Oh, I think she said, I think she said really nice parenting. I'm going to call child services on you. And I was oh like, God, oh, on me. You're going to call child like, services on me. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, you. And like, I just lost it. And like, we were in this like garage structures and like, I have a very loud booming voice. It was just like, Wah! like it was awful. And I like cried the whole way home, but I was like, no one asked you for like, so like, so that'd be like the worst piece of like someone trying to give me advice. And like, it just, it was just, just horrible. Like it was the wrong piece of advice, the wrong time. Like she came back around, moved back around. Like, I felt like I was kind of getting like, like, she was coming after me a little bit, you know what I mean? And she like sped off. It was just like, it was all very, very weird. But I was like, no, like she's and like the second we got in the car and like, and like my kid didn't have her coat on her. She was fine. Like everything was fine. So like, yeah, it was crazy. That, that would be it. People have too much time in their day. Like if they can take the time to drive around a parking lot to be like, Hey lady, your kid is cold. And you're like, no, I'm holding her. She's sweating. Like she sucks. Yeah, exactly. She sucks. And like get a job. Yeah. Get a job, do something. Well, listen, wherever she is, um, from shit moms won't say to you, lady, whoever it was, go fuck yourself, yes, right? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Like, yeah. fuck you. Absolutely. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. Um, third question of the big mom three. What is a uh, like skill or superpower that you had before becoming a mom that you think has really helped you as a mom? 
I think being a school teacher, because I teach, um, I teach fourth grade dual language outside of New York City. Um, I'm taking this year off because of COVID, but. Um, but now what, that. what is COVID? Is something yes. happening in the, it's so odd. It seems like nothing, nothing, nothing yeah. happened. Yeah. Well, people listen to this in like years from now, they're going to be like, what happened? Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so um, for me, I think it was just being a teacher and like knowing how to like, my behavior management that I have in a classroom is the same behavior management that I have as, as mom, like it's the exact same, which like sometimes my kids love and sometimes they hate, but it doesn't really matter. Cause like they, like they know what they're going to get and, and how they're going to get it. And, and how are they, there's no like surprises, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Good, good, good answer. Uh, and we're going to talk about your like weird double life in a little yeah. bit, but First, I, I want to jump into something because this is something like when we first connected, my wife introduced me to you, basically. She was like, you have to follow this chick. She's super funny. And then I was like, oh, my God, we're we're kindred spirits, right? Like, you wrote this whole book about being hilariously infertile. You have an Instagram page dedicated basically to, like, infertility. Like, I'm going to read your, your dedication verbatim. Like, it says, this book is dedicated to all the people out there who are struggling with infertility. Uh, I hope I can make you laugh today. So you're like a, a, a pretty cool lady. You're an advocate for people that are going through something tough. And you've had a lot of people come at you because ultimately you got pregnant mm -hmm. twice. Yes. That does not make you um, not infertile. Yeah. Like I'm not any less infertile just because we have a baby. Like lesbians are infertile, right? That's a thing. So how do, how do you navigate that? Because is that like a regular thing that people are continuing to be like, hey, bitch, you got two kids, it's enough? Or like, I don't know, talk to me about it a little bit. So sometimes, not, not, not as often, or maybe it is, and I just ignore it at this point. But, <laughs> um, but I feel like, I mean, yeah, I've definitely been put under pressure that's like, you know, my, my journey through infertility wasn't as, as hard or as awful as other people's journeys, which is true, you know, and, um, you know, I was able to get pregnant with an, with an IUI and an insemination for my first daughter. And, um, after many IUIs for, with, uh, an IVF for, you know, but my first round of IVF for my second daughter. So I do always have a little bit of this like guilt that like, like I didn't go through what some of my followers share with me. Like they share with me the most like heartbreaking stories of things that they've gone through. And I, it, it really does just honestly just break my heart. But at the same time, like I'm still infertile. Like if I were to go, if we were to try to get pregnant right now, I would still have to go and get, you know, infertility treatment. I can't get pregnant on my own. I don't ovulate. And um, not to compare infertility to like a major medical diagnosis, but I like someone at one time in my defense was like, right, but just because like you, like you're in remission from cancer doesn't mean you didn't have cancer, which I like, I don't, I don't like, I, I totally get that analogy. I don't want to yeah. compare the two, you know, but at the same time, like it is like, it's a medical diagnosis. So, um, I'm still like, I'm still infertile. I just might not be as infertile or, or going through some other, you know, things that other people are going through, but I still am. And I also happen to be live outside of New York city and I had like the best clinic and the mm -hmm. best doctors. Um, and I just, blindly followed what they told me to do <laughs> like so so I think that has a lot to do with it also I know that you know for me on my Instagram I never I never post about you know on, on hilariously infertile I never post about my children I have it in like my profile but people they kind of want to hear and see what they want to hear and see so when it says part mom part teacher part wife um you know always inappropriate forever infertile they think that that's like me being a mom to my dog, which like, yeah, you can lump him in with that. But like, I like, I, it's like a first thing that's there. And, and I did that on purpose because I always try to be like blatantly honest with people, overly honest with people. And I never would want anyone um, to think I was hiding from them or lying from them or anything. So, um, so yeah, I have gotten flack on that. And some people, and every now and then when I mention my, my children, I'll have a drop off in like a few followers. And I get that. Um, you know, it's hard. It's a really, really hard time for people. So, but at the same time, you know, I kind of, another way that I look at it is like, I went through what I went through and it wasn't like, I didn't have any late term miscarriages. I didn't have, have any stillbirth. I didn't have, um, need surrogacy or any of these, like, you know, 
a hysterectomy, like all these things that oh. so many people go through years and years and years and years and years of fertility treatments um, and procedures. I didn't have any of that, but I didn't have any of that. And maybe, and I'm not, I'm not like a spiritual person who's like, everything works, but like, you know what I mean? Like maybe I went through what I went through so that I could see the funny part of it. So I could bring this to people. You know what I mean? So and like, is that, is that like where you sort of started off? Were you just like, I need to have a platform to talk about this? Yeah. So I, so what happened was I was on maternity leave with my second daughter. So I'd already been through all of my infertility treatments and I was helping a friend of mine through her infertility treatments and another family member through her infertility treatments. And I was like telling my husband all about it. And at first he was like, I don't really know like when, when Allison's ovulating, like we're good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. Now that's Allison ovulating. Good for Yeah, me. exactly. And I was like, it's go time. But um, but but he but he was like, I think you should write a book about this. And I was like, ha, like whatever. Like, I don't even read books, you know? And and so I just kind of laughed him off and I didn't think anything of it. And then about like probably like a week later, or maybe two weeks later, like in that time frame, I just opened my laptop one day and I just started writing and it just poured out of me. Like I just started at the beginning of, you know, our, you know, infertility of our journey of our, like kind of around our marriage. And then I just brought it all the way through until my second daughter was born. And I wrote it in about five weeks. Wow. Which really, yeah. Which is really, That's really fast. fast. And as I was writing it, I was like, wait, like, this is funny. You know, like I was kind of surprised yeah. by myself. I didn't know. I was like, is it a book or is it a blog or is it just me having a random diary that like nothing's going to happen? You know, <laughs> my journal, Yeah, my journal, you know? So, but I, when I realized that it was funny, I showed it to a few people and they were like, this is actually really funny. And like, this could be helpful. And I said, you know, this is the way that women talk when women are with their friends. You know, like I can go out when we used to be able to go out to restaurants, I could go out to a restaurant with my girlfriends and like, we could talk about vaginal discharge, like, oh, totally. Like, yeah. Until the entrees come, you know? So, and like men aren't like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just different. Like women just, they talk about that stuff. You know, they talk about that nitty gritty and, and they're funny and they're snarky and they're inappropriate. And I more so almost sometimes than men, you know, like I know. Totally. I totally like my husband and his friends like they talk about like sports and their jobs and like that's it you and everybody's like men talk about sex men are like you know tits this pussy that like no they're not like you're right they talk about sports and super boring things and like my friends and i are like so t talk to me about the one time you had anal sex like yes <laughs> yes and like i want details like i want you to really tell me every piece of it like that's just how women are 100 percent. that's how women should be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's so, why the show was created. Cause not all women are quite like that, but exactly. you're right. When I, when I read your book, I was like, I feel like I'm just talking to someone like that's a really good way to, to look at what you did because it's very conversational. It's very funny. Like there's one thing in there you talk about, like the first time you had to bring your kid to, I, I don't know where you were, but like it, it was a shopping cart kind of scenario. And like, you had to like, do I, do I put the fucking groceries on her head? Do I put the yeah. carriage in here? Like, it's just very like, this is hard. This shit's hard. Infertility is hard. Motherhood's hard. And it's very, very conversational. So I think like mission accomplished if that's what you were trying to do. Thank you. Yeah, that is what I was trying to do. So, so I wrote the book and then everyone was like, well, you should get on social media so that you could help people. Cause I, I tried to send it out in like my naivete. I tried sending it out to like agents and literary publishers in and around New York city. And either I didn't hear back or they said, we just don't think it's a big enough market. And I remember being like, cause I have like two monitors here. And I remember looking at that email and then looking at like the numbers just in the United States, just from the CDC, which is just, you know, infertility that's known infertility that's being claimed by an insurance company, not people who are struggling at home or don't have insurance or whatever. And I was like, no, like this doesn't make any sense to me, you know, because, and then I thought like, if this isn't a big enough market, then that means that women are at home and they're suffering in silence. And that I just, I couldn't, I, I was like, I can't have that. So, 
someone suggested, you know, getting the social media and I was like, ew, I hate social media. I can't do social media. I'm a school teacher. I can't have my, my students find me like they're 10, they can Google. And, and he was like, well, this is what you have. You want to make a difference. This is what you have to do. So I started the social. So I, I kind of put the book on the back burner. It was always there, but I just kind of left it honestly on my computer for like yeah. two years and three oh. years. And then, and then I just built the social media platform and it just took off. And that's what really like that dedication is like, I, every day, I just, if there's someone, who, you know, man, woman, doesn't matter going through infertility and they're having a rough day and they're walking to, you know, a treatment out of a treatment or just got some news and I, they're able to come to my social media in order to see my content or to have remember my book or whatever it is and if I could make them smile a little bit and help them get through that then like then I'm good like that's all I that's why I'm doing it so that's awesome yeah. that that's so cool um and like you've done some cool stuff with it. it's like you wrote the book I know you did like some stand-up shows like you've like done the damn thing like and you may not know the answer to this question like where does this go for you like is this something you want to do full-time are you like teaching's my passion you know some some teachers really love teaching i don't know i wasn't for me but you know what what's what's next for you so that's such a great question so last year i um i had considered maybe taking this year off and this was like in in like you know november 2019 i was like you know maybe i'll take the next year off because i was starting to do those comedy shows and it's a lot like being a full-time teacher and, and mom and wife um and still posting for hilariously infertile and then doing all that which is like basically an event planner i was like i don't like i have to get like corporate sponsors and like tickets Crazy. what am i doing what am i doing you know and i'd be in here doing it all by myself like the marketing like all of it and I'm like, this is a lot, you know? So, and then I do the stand-up comedy show, which I'm also like, I'm not a comedian. Like, so, so I was debating to write your own material. Like, how did you, you did? Yeah, okay. Basic, yeah. Basically it's just like me kind of paraphrasing the book, but in like a very, like, like, you know, I don't know how to say it, but like very com comedic way, I guess, you know, and I had done this speech like one time at NYU and then I kind of edited it and added things and taken things away, but it's all just like my story, our story. Cool. So, so yeah. And it's like, and it's funny. And people are like, do you have any training in being a comedian? And I'm like, no, I have no training in being a comedian. Like aside from the fact that I was a school, that I'm a school teacher and like I came from a dysfunctional family, like no. <laughs> so so I was debating taking this year off anyway, because I kind of wanted to just like, I really felt like I could take hilariously and for some, you know, to a better place. And when I say that, I don't mean like for me monetarily, I mean, like I could reach more people, like I could do sure. more good. And I could like, if I could get picked up by this or by that, then I could, there's, I feel like there's so many people out there who there aren't on social media at all, um, or they are, and they just don't know that there's this community to help people, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I could really help people who are like just crying themselves to sleep at night. And that just sucks. So I debated doing that. And then COVID happened um, in the spring. And I was like, I can't take, I can't take next year off. Like my students need me and the, my Hispanic community needs me. And this is really important. Um, and then I, uh, you know, realized how much of the time my daughters were going to be at home and learning, like learning from a teacher, but not really learning from a teacher. And I was like, I like my, they need someone teaching them. They need a teacher teaching them. Yeah. And my husband's like, well, can't we just like hire a teacher to teach them? And I was like, great, but like, I'm a teacher. So I don't really, like, why don't you go talk to your friends about sports? Please? Yeah. I was like, what's Tom Brady up to? So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, so in terms of what's next, I really don't know, you know, I mean, I started this other kind of spinoff social media called hilariously parenting, which I'm excited about. Um, also really funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's super funny. <laughs> So I'm trying to kind of build that a little bit too. I'm writing another book now about like my like weirdly dysfunctional childhood. Um, and I just kind of want to see, you know, I, have, I never read that book, like lean in. People are like, lean in. I don't know what that means, but I think that means like, just like see where it can go. If you would. <laughs> follow, like, follow your journey yeah. and open like, your, like, you know, yeah. your asshole. I, I don't know. Like I don't know. it's all, it's all nonsense. Yeah. Um, where so, can yeah. people buy this guy though? I know where I bought it and it's, pretty cool that I could buy on Amazon. So where else can I 
buy this book. Where else can people yeah, find it? Yeah, you can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it. There's like a, there's links in my um in my Instagram. You can buy, go to my website, which is hilariouslyinfertile.com. You can buy it there. Um, and pretty much anywhere where books are sold, you can even request it. Some people are like, I requested it at my local library. I'm like, oh my god, like they're gonna hate me at your local library. Like this <laughs> I is love like, that. Yeah. I love that. Because yeah. you just, you say a lot of dirty words in it. So I love to picture somebody in a library, like an older woman being like, now what's this? And picking it up and being like, ah, and then like, you know, dying of a heart attack. And so that I think is actually, really I took out so many fucks. I took out so many fucks. But you left just the right amount in. <laughs> you did. That's what everyone said. You really I'm did. Like, I had like, I think I had like 80 some odd bucks when I, when I sent it off to the publisher and then when they brought it, when they sent it back to me, they didn't say anything about the, cause it, I self-published, so they didn't say anything about the books. But then when you see it on like, like printed out, like it's going to be in the book and you're like, there's a lot of fucks. That's a lot of fucks. <laughs> yeah. I started counting it and I was like, there's like over 80. So I like, I toned it down, but sometimes you just have to say like, what the fuck? What like, the fuck? Yeah. You know? I, well, you know, it's so funny. Oh, absolutely. What's funny about my show is to like from an advertising perspective, here's a little knowledge for all y'all out there. Um, I actually can't advertise much, right? So like my background is in marketing, but I actually can't advertise much because the word shit is in it. Yeah. So, so you have like the asterisk. They don't like it. They don't oh, like really? it. Yeah. And but like, and that's okay. You know, like how you have goals of like just wanting to reach a certain group of people and being inclusive and, and trying to make people laugh and bring some levity to a really shitty situation. Like my goal, like I shared with you, it's really similar. Yeah. Right. Like, and I think it's very cool when you have moms on Instagram who have 80,000 followers, hundred thousand followers, they're all really cool chicks. Like I think people miss that. Like these are all real women with real problems who go through real things who are willing to tell the truth about them. Yeah. Um, and that's like an amazing community that I was totally not expecting to like dip my toe in at any point. But like now meeting a bunch of cool people, I'm like, oh my goodness, like good for you ladies getting out there and doing the damn thing. So I think it's awesome and everybody should buy your book and everybody should follow you. Um, and if you don't like, I don't know, follow me. Um, yeah. <laughs> follow someone for Christ's sake, won't you? Yeah. Uh, let's shift gears a little bit. So you've mentioned a couple times you are a school teacher. I think, I think your life is hysterical. So you lead this totally weird double life. When, like to the point that like you even say on your website, like Jeffries is not your real last name. Like we're not going to blow your cover, but like it's not a real last name. When we connected about a week and a half ago, you were like, oh my God, I asked her, I was like, do your students know? Do your, the parents of your students know? And you're like, no, 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 no. They have no idea. But sometimes like on my lunch break, I'm late to pick them up from recess. I'm like, oh my God, guys, I'm so sorry. I was just doing an interview in Chicago. And they were like, okay, <laughs> I'm sure. What do you do if they find you out, man? Like, do you have to quit? Or are you just going to be like, no, I say fuck a lot. Like, yeah. I am. I talk about my vagina. Parent teacher night, yeah. bitches. Like, what do you do? <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny you say that. So, okay. So, so yeah. So, I'm a school teacher. I never had any social media. Um, Jeffries is not my last, is not my real last name. My husband's name is Jeff. And as like an homage to him and our marriage, I thought that that would be a great, you know, pen name. Um, originally, once I, when I started the, the Instagram, I was even scared to put my face on it. Like, I didn't have my yeah. face on it. There was no, there were, I don't think stories existed, um, like four years ago, but I just, I didn't have my face on it at all. It was just, it was just pictures, memes, and whatever. And then I did this speech at NYU, which turned out later, years later to be my comedy thing. And it was good and it was funny. And I wanted to share that with people. And I contacted my, president of my teacher's union for my district. And I was like, can I put my face on this? My name will not be on it, but my face will just to make sure like what my, you know, like what my response is going to be like, are if, if, cause in the contract for teaching, at least in my district, it says that teachers are allowed to be otherwise gainfully employed as long as it's not unbecoming of a teacher. Uh oh. <laughs> So there's a little bit of a gray area there. And I was like, what is this unbecoming of a teacher? And I was like, I'm talking about my ovaries, my uterus, my vagina. I'm talking about sex. I'm talking about intercourse. I'm talking about infertility. I'm talking about gynecological stuff. Is that unbecoming of a, of a teacher? And he was like, no, like you can't be a stripper, basically, is what he said. 
Oh. And I was like, I don't know. You know, like I have personal opinions, but like, whatever. I don't think that's necessarily like, I'm becoming a teacher, but whatever. I'm oh. sure teachers, teachers, I'm sure do actually a lot worse, just not for money. But, um, teachers are gross. Yeah. <laughs> totally <laughs> gross. They're so freaky. So, so I was like, okay. And so he wrote me back this like big long thing that was like, while your content is adult driven and it's not necessarily appropriate for, for young children, it is not inappropriate. You're doing a service to the community. You're doing like all this stuff. Like it was very supportive. He's like, the union will back you no matter what, if any, any administrator or parent comes at you. And I was like, wow. Like I was really, really touched Thanks. by that. Yeah. But I still felt that it was really important to keep my anonymity because I wanted to keep my, my work and my, my hilarious name fertile work and my teaching separate. I wanted to protect my students and the community where I teach. I think that that's really important. Um, and I just, you know, I just wanted to kind of, you know, keep them separate. I don't know. So, so yeah, so I started doing this and as it's grown and grown, like I don't, it's not like on the first day of school, I'm like, what up? I'm famous. Which like, I'm not, you know, <laughs> Like, Maybe when you go back, though, you, you should try it. Yeah. <laughs> just to see, I'm famous, you motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, yeah. if anybody even believes you. Yeah, exactly. Be like, hashtag, hilariously like, fertile. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, like, yes, every now and then they'll say things about, like, TikTok and this and that. And, like, they follow these these influencers that I'm like, you, you're too young. Like you should not be following them at all, first of all. And then they'll say things like, well, you don't know anything about that. And I'm like, I know a little bit. About, about 80,000 about that. <laughs> like I know a little bit, but yeah, like there'll be times where I'll be on the phone or I'll be running out because I have to go do an interview in my car because I won't do it from school, you know, and just like things yeah. like that. And I'll come back and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like I was on the phone with, you know, this radio, you know, channel in Chicago and they're like, ha it's funny. You were probably just getting a sandwich. And I was like, no, I was actually like, they just don't, they just don't believe me. Don't and what's, believe you. what's so funny is that like, they know that I don't lie. Like they know they're like, she never lies ever. And so they're like, so you have like, I'll be like, well, I have however many thousand followers and they're like, ha and they just, and but then they're, but then someone will be like, but she doesn't lie. <laughs> you know, so it's just, it is, it is really funny, but it's just, yeah, it's just totally separate. Some of them, you know, my administration knows in my building, a number of other, my colleagues know, um, and, uh, and they follow me and like, we'll be walking down the hall and they're like, that was hilarious last night. And my, my students are like, what? And I'm like, oh, nothing. Nothing. We hung out. It was super yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, do any of the parents follow you or they totally don't know? No, I mean, it's slightly different because they're, they're all native Spanish speakers. They're all from Central America. So, so there's, there's actually, I just did a, an Instagram live with this other woman, a fertility coach, and she's um, Colombian, I believe. And when I realized that I was like, Hmm, like maybe there would be some crossover there if they were, if they were following her. Um, but, but no, one time they, so yeah, so my, my students' parents don't know, they don't, they don't know anything okay. about it. One time, one of my former students found me on Instagram and she was like, I know what it is. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I found you. And I was like, no, seriously. Cause like, I've, I mean, this sounds like so self centered, but like I have Googled my, my real name just to see if there's any, if I've like messed up anywhere and there's any parallel, any connection. Listen, I have Google alerts on my own name. Um, you do? <laughs> and I don't have 80,000. Yeah. And it's, it's not because it, it's just because I want to know if anybody's talking shit about me, but hmm. that's smart. So, I should do that. Yeah, nothing, no, no weirdness there. I think yeah. you should have them. So I, and so, and I, and there wasn't, so I knew that like she could, there's no way that she could find me. And she, she must have like gone into a different teacher and seen that like they follow me or something and like gone literally scrolled through every single follower of that or person who that yeah. person is following. But she said, and I was like, okay. And like, she was, she was a fifth grader. I, I taught her in fourth grade. She was in fifth grade when she told me she found out. And I just like kind of sat down with them at lunch and I was like, listen, like it's not geared towards kids. Like I'm not ashamed of it. I was like, however, I don't project it everywhere. You know, I was like, it's, and they're like, why do you do it? <laughs> and I was like, you know, I had a really hard time getting pregnant and I'm helping people and it's, and I'm helping people who are going through a hard time. And, you know, if you have any questions, you can ask me any questions, but it's, it's really not 
geared towards children. So I'd appreciate it. And then like, I like found them and I blocked them anyway. I was like, you know, I'd appreciate if you don't follow me, but I understand if you're curious, I'll answer any questions you have as long as it's appropriate. And so by that point, it was like a day and a half later and, and you know, fifth graders, they're like, no, it's fine. We're bored of it already. We don't care. We don't care. You're not that interesting. You're a teacher. Yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. What about your, your kids? So remind how old are your, your kids? So my oldest one is seven. She's going to be eight in November. And my younger one just turned five, like two weeks ago. So they're so five young. and seven like, right now. So do they like, do they get it at all? Like, it, does your husband get like, do they understand like what you're putting out into the world right now? Or are they like, no, that's mom. And that's my wife. Like big deal. She's, she's doing her silly Instagram shit again. Yeah. <laughs> so my husband, um, he gets it. He definitely gets it. Although the other night I said something because I like, whenever like I hit another thousand, I'll be like, oh, like, like I just hit 78 or something like that. Like, just like jokingly. Cause like, it's just, it's so crazy and like humbling. Yeah. It's like, fuck, you know? And, oh, and he goes, yeah, I'll take you seriously when you have a hundred. And I was like, yeah, I will too. <laughs> then you're legit. You're not legit yet yeah. until you hit a hundred. Until okay. you have a hundred thousand followers. But, but so for him, I mean, it's, it's, I'm still the same person. I think that he's really thankful about that. And he does realize like the, you know, the magnitude of it. I think for him, the, the biggest thing was when we did the, the comedy nights and he would see people who like, I mean, they came from when I was in New York, people drove out from like Wisconsin. When I was in Boston, Ooh. people drove down from like Nova Scotia. And I was like, why? And they were like, to see you. And I was like, why? <laughs> like, I was like, this is crazy. I mean, not crazy. Like it was just so like humbling, you know? So sure. when, he, when he sees that and he's next to me at those events, when he sees that, I think that's when he's really like, whoa, you know, my older daughter, she gets it a little bit. She doesn't really, under, she doesn't understand social media. She doesn't understand, you know, I don't let, I'm, I keep her very, very sheltered from like any of that stuff. She's actually like very, like an old school kid and that she doesn't really understand any of that. Um, but she's wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. But she, she does know that I have a lot of followers. She knows I wrote a book. Um, she knows that I, that I'm helping people. She thinks I'm helping people try to get pregnant, which I'm like, it's a little bit different than that. But she, she knows that, that I'm helping people and that I've done comedy things. She knows it's called hilariously infertile. Sometimes she outs me to her teachers every now and then. <laughs> and like, sometimes she does it before meet the teacher night or, you know, parents to conferences and I don't know until like I'm sitting there being like totally serious and like they've read everything about my vagina, you know, <laughs> which is fine because it's out there to read, but it's just funny. So, so yeah, so she knows my little one is like, she's starting to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. Like today I happened to be on Instagram and I just was reposting something and, and she was like, Karen Jeffries, that's you. And I was like, Cause I was kind of waiting for her to be like, but that's not you. Cause it's not, you know, but, but yeah, so they get it, you know. Okay. Do they yeah. think it's cool at all or not yet? Um, I think my older one thinks it's cool. She was like, there was one moment where we were at swim class and like this one mom started talking to us and she was like, this is my mom. She has a lot of followers and she's famous. And she was on um, like, like not CNN, but kind of like CNN last weekend. Cause it was like last year when I was on, I went down to like Atlanta to be on HLN and cool. I was like, Zoe, shh. Like, like okay. all she, yeah. Cool. Like, yeah. Like be cool. Be cool. And I was like, she just asked like, what time does swim class start? Like that's all, you know? Amazing. So there are times and the mom's like, no, that's cool. She's proud of you. You know? So, so she, she is, but like, I don't know if she totally gets it, but when she says it to other of her friends, she sees their reaction. So when she says like, my mom has like, you know, 77,000 followers or whatever, and she sees their reaction, then she's like, oh, maybe that is a big deal. Like she's, oh, like, big deal. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, she's just my mom and she's totally annoying or whatever, you know? I love it. That's so cool. Well, let's start to, to wrap ourselves up here, my friend. This has been a real blast. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, so last, last question for you. Yes. What is something that you know now that you wish you knew before becoming a mom? So I've been thinking about this one since we talked about a, about a week ago, week and a half ago. That This one's really hard. That's what I'm here for, to, hit, to ask all the hard-hitting questions. That's I the mean, it's like, I'm basically CNN. Yeah, you pretty much are. Um, I, I, think, I think I didn't realize how hard being a mom is and how selfless you have to be for being a mom. 
Um, because I think for me, that was the biggest transition, like going from like, I can do what I want, when I want, how I want it. Even though I had a dog, like that doesn't really count to like, I am just like this child servant basically for a number of years, you know? And, and so I think that, I think that how hard it is, is completely underrated. And I think that how selfless and how like always constantly giving of yourself you have to be is also really underrated and not really talked about, you know, that much because it's just, it's just constant. Like it's just constant, you know? It is. That's a great answer. And I think like, I think moms are sometimes afraid to like be viewed as like martyrs, right? Like we're so selfless. We give ourselves, but it's true. Like your days are not about you anymore. And like, even when they are like, they're still about your kids. Like your whole platform is about trying to have your kids. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like this is your whole separate, like separate life. And it's still about them. Like my show is still about my kid. Yeah. You know, like it is what it is. So, um, thank you so much for coming on. Where can everybody follow you if they don't already follow you? But what, what's, and I know you have your new one. So tell, tell me where everybody can follow you. Okay. So on Instagram, it's at hilariously underscore infertile. Um, uh, I also have the spinoff only on Instagram. I have the spinoff hilariously underscore parenting. That one's only on Instagram. Um, uh, Facebook is like, I think it's H I underscore infertile or something like that. But if Facebook you sucks. It, yeah. yeah. If you search, it'll come up. Same with Twitter. So you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. You can go to my website, which is hilariouslyinfertile.com. And there's like, there's actually free chapters in my book there, which that I recommend. Cause I'm like, why buy the book if you're not sure if you're going to like it or not? Like just go buy the <laughs> book. Yeah. Buy the book. Don't. Don't give your book away. <laughs> I'm like, just go, go read the free chapters if you're interested, then buy it. But like, you know, it's like a, otherwise I'm like, I'm not going to tell you to buy my, like buy my book. No, go read it and see if you want to buy it. Like the few chapters, see if you want to buy it. And then you can make the decision, an educated decision. Um, and I also have merchandise there and stuff too. And there's like articles that I've written and collabs and things like that. So my biggest platform is definitely Instagram, but, um, but yeah, so that's where you can find me. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. And everybody out there, please follow us on all of our social media platforms as well. I will post it at the end of this episode and have a great night. Thank you so much for having me. Shit moms won't say.